Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, on this video, we're going to be doing the the design and the fabrication of the lower control arm for my rear A-arm suspension on the Baja Bug. This is my first template for the rear suspension. Um, I believe that it's got all the offsets correct. The distance from here to here, that remains to be seen because I need to cut it out of metal, cycle it, to find out if it's going to be long enough to keep the tire from hitting the body at the uh, at full compression. So what I'm going to do is when I, when I trace this out of metal, I'm going to add about an inch onto here so that I know I'll start with it being a little bit too long. And then when I start putting this in place and actually physically cycling it, um, if I can, I'll uh, knock this tack off and, and shorten it up because I want it to be just long enough or just wide enough so at full compression the tire is just barely not touching the body. So that's going to be the, the sweet spot. Once I had the paper template, roughly how I wanted it, I transferred it to a piece of metal, used my plasma cutter and cut it out. I've got the tire bolted on, I've taken a level and I've uh, I've made sure that this tire is, is basically level straight up and down. I've got the lower control arm on here. It's just tacked. It's very flimsy right now because it's just a pretty thin piece of metal. Um, and there's no, there's no upper link here yet, so it's, it's flying loose. But I've got a, uh, a scissor jack underneath the tire. I'm going to jack it up, and I'm going to see how much room I have before it runs into the body. So what I've done here is I've got this I've got the scissor jack underneath the tire, and I've got the tire jacked up to what should be about three inches of um, ground clearance at full compression. Meaning, <clears throat> I set it up so that if the tire if the suspension compresses this much, the chassis will be three inches off of the ground. That's what I'm targeting because that gives me a little bit of um, a cushion before the chassis hits the ground and you also have to assume that your tire is going to compress a little bit so you need a little bit of free play there. So I'm roughly at 14 and a half inches and then underneath the lowest portion of my transaxle here I'm at 17 and a half inches. So I'm at 14 and a half and 17 and a half that's where I'm getting my three inches. If I'm able to get this much compression I would have to make new fenders, which I could, but they would have to be some, some really tall fenders to be able to, uh, to accept the tire coming up this high. It's practically coming up to the, the window on the bug, so we'll see. I'll have, to, I'll have to experiment with that, but the, the worst case scenario is I just won't be able to let it compress this much. At full compression here, this is where clearance comes in. Um, this would not be as much of a problem if the tire was uh, further back, but I am trying to shorten up the wheelbase. I'll either shorten it an inch and a half or an inch and three quarters. I'll probably shorten it an inch and a half, and then I'll mock this all up again and, and try it one more time. So this is take two now. I shortened this lower control arm one and three quarters of an inch. I took three quarters of an inch off of this end, and I took one inch off of this end. When I, when I cranked it up, just as I got to full compression, it actually did make slight contact with the body. I've clearly reached the, uh, the limit on how short my lower control arm can be. The reason I'm not worried is when I've been set, setting this up, I've actually got, this is my square bung, and this is the heim threaded into it. I've got it threaded in all the way. I can actually thread these himes out. I've got at least half an inch to play with. This gives me the length that I need on this lower control arm. The next step that I just finished is 
um, I made my upper control link and I tacked on a connection point inside the, uh, inside the frame here. My whole intention of this was to design it so that as the suspension travels up and down, uh, the camber does not change. So the geometry of this upper link matches the geometry of the lower control arm, meaning the pivot points are the same distance apart for the upper link and the lower control arm, and the upper link and the lower control arm are running parallel to each other. If you set that up, if the geometry is equal, then as this moves up and down, the spindle end stays, I'm gonna say straight up and down, but it really stays wherever you set it to. So if I had like five degrees here, as I would run up, the five degrees would stay up there. But because I'm going to be so close with my tire clearance up at the top here, um, I'm setting it up so that my camber stays the same. As I move forward, now that I've got the spindle, now that I have, let's call it my A-arm geometry, the next thing that I need to do before I can figure out where to install my shock absorbers is I need to figure out how much, what's going to limit my travel. But the limiting factor is going to be my drive shaft. I need to get my drive shaft installed because that is going to tell me how much droop I can get because it's going to be limited by my U-joints. And I need to figure out how high the suspension is going to go. That's either going to be limited by the U-joints, the drive shaft, or if the drive shafts can give it more travel than it needs, I'm going to be limited by my, my uh, ground clearance. Now that I've got the, the drive shaft in place and I know my upper and lower travel limits and I've mocked up my shock absorbers so I know roughly where I'm going to mount them on this lower control arm, with the drive shaft it, point, it noted or it showed me that I need to take out some metal on the front of the control arm here and then when I sized up the shock absorbers I found that my shock absorber is going to mount roughly around here. Although right now, this control arm travels at an angle here to this uh, pivot back here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it 90 degrees out this way, and then once I get past my shock mounting point, then I'm going to come in and go towards the, the pivot point here. All right, here's my new cutout for the lower control arm. This is the new one. This is this is the one I had on there before. They have the same dimensions as far as their offset and their length. So if we lay this one on here, lay this one on here, they're the same. <clears throat> they're the same this way, they're the same this way. The difference is this one has a provision cut out here for the U-joint to clear going into the micro stub. And then this one has, I purposely made a straight section here to allow me to weld on a heavy duty um, bracket for the shock absorber. So I'm, I'm assuming my shock absorber is going to weld somewhere in here. Um, so that's why I purposely made a, a straight portion in there. And then I also wanted a piece running through on an angle to give me some support this way. So now that I have this, I'm gonna <clears throat> trace it onto some metal, plasma cut it out, clean up the edges. I'm just gonna make two of them so that I can work on one side for now. And then I'm gonna take it into the basement and uh, form up the inch and a quarter by eighth inch thick pieces that will make the inside pieces, these side pieces in here and up and around here.
So I've been welding the, uh, the lower control arm up and it's 99% of the way welded up at this point. Here it is. If you saw my other video, you saw where I was talking about strategically welding these to avoid this bung warping. Um, and I did do that. This bung is welded solid. These two are welded solid. This one is lightly tacked. And when I say lightly tacked, it was even moving. It was flexing a little bit when I was running a tap through there. That's why the vice grip are on here right now to, to hold it in place a little more. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually <clears throat> spin the himes in here. I'm going to install the, uh, the spindle on here and see how it fits. So I sized this up and it did, it did uh, warp a little bit. I'm sure it's when I weld this part here. It, it draws these together a little bit. It's, it's really tiny and it actually will bolt together, but I can feel the resistance in the himes and I don't want that. I want them to be um, in there naturally so that they're not wearing, wearing these out any faster than they need to. So what I've done is I've peeled these tabs back a little bit and I, I don't know if you can see, but that's one side of the tack in there. It's real small. I'm gonna actually go in there with the grinder, knock it out, then I'm gonna do that on the other side. Then I'm gonna reassemble it, get this heim exactly where it needs to be, then I'm gonna vice grip it down real tight, and then I'm gonna put some tacks on there, and then I'll test it again. Now I cracked the tack weld loose on one side. Once I did that, the tack weld on the other side was still holding it just barely. It was, it was floating, just floating around on that tack, but I left it that way. Um, and then I bolted the spindle onto it. I let it, I let it find its natural position, and then I clamped it. And now, now this is real smooth. It's, it takes much less effort to rotate this than um, than before. I broke that loose and let it let it move a little bit because when I welded this, it did it closed these in a little bit. And when I would take the himes and put them into the spindle you could see there was not, you know, I'm talking maybe a 32nd of an inch and you could get it in there, but it put undue stress on this heim. So that's why I went through all this rigmarole to get that very relaxed. And now I'm gonna tack the bottom, the top and the bottom, just put a little tack on there. Then I'm gonna test fit it one more time. Then I'm gonna clamp the sides, put tacks on those and test it one more time. itself is fully welded up in position for the first time I can actually see how strong it's gonna be it, right now it seems like it's pretty strong I won't really know until the bug is up and driving and I can hit the brakes but it, it definitely is panning out to be a little bit stronger than I was hoping for because it does have to hold it does have to hold the rotational force of the wheel because I don't have my upper link designed to take any twisting action, only camber action. At this point, like I said, the next step is for me to start looking at where the shock absorber is gonna come into play and figuring out where I'm going to mount that to the uh, lower control arm. I hope you enjoy this video of making this lower control arm. Uh, I'm gonna have to cut a lot out of it because when I, when I have this much time invested into something like this, I obviously have to pick and choose how much I can put in the video. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll try and put a lot of the fabrication in there so that hopefully you guys can see what was involved in, in making it. So thanks for watching the video. I really hope that it helps you guys out or inspires you to work on your own projects. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Take care guys.